everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Seppi. And in today's video, as you can guess by the title, this is one of my most highly requested videos. Um, I'm going to be basically opening my exam results and I'm gonna be showing you guys how I revised for my medical school exams this year. So I am a fourth year medical student. So in the UK, med school is five years and uh, yeah, I've done four of them now. So I'll be going into my final year next month, um, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, but yeah, I thought that I would do like, I've watched before people opening their results and um, in my university your results come in two bits. So after a week, you get pass fail and then um, beyond that like a few days later we got kind of a breakdown of our results and my kind of result breakdown came through so I thought that I would go through it with you guys so fortunately I passed my exams my exams were in two parts so the first one was the written paper the YSKT so the year specific knowledge test and the second part was the OSCE which is the clinical skills part and that's where you basically do like practicals and you um, show to an examiner on a patient or a simulated patient, basically an actor, how you would um, like respond to each scenario. So for example, you could have like pregnant ladies coming in or someone with tummy pain coming in or you can have someone with eye pain, sudden loss of vision, headaches, all of these things. So my exam results came through and so for the written part, I think the pass mark every year on average, I don't know what it was this year, is about 50%. And I got 60, so I was way past the pass mark, thank the Lord. And for the OSCE, um, I got an average of 72.2% across the across 14 stations. So there's 14 stations that you do practicals on. And um, yeah, I, I got 72.2. So out of 14 stations, you can fail five. Um, and you, I think the average number to fail this year was one. Yeah, but um, the average pass mark for OSCE again is about 50%. So I did well above the average. Um, I think I got top 20%, but um, I'm not 100% sure if I did get the top 20% of my year group, um, but I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, so I'm very, very happy with that. Um, so they kind of broke it down for us and um, yeah, like I got like 80%, 77.5, 72.5. 55, 80, 91.3, 97.5, 100%, uh, 76.3, 70, 50, 50, 43.8, and 67.5. So yeah, it all balanced out to 72.2%. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really, really beyond happy with that. So I am going into my final year now, which I am ecstatic about. Um, and yeah, I think that I, I put in a lot of work for it. So I'm really, really happy with the results. Um, I think overall when you add up, so when you add up the 60 and the 72.2, I kind of hit like a, around 65%, uh, which should put me like in the fifth decile. So in medical school, they like rank you in deciles. So um, top decile is the top 10% of the year group and bottom decile is like the bottom 10% performing of the year group. And I think I, I would probably be sitting on around fifth with 65%, but but I'm not too sure because um, they haven't sent that out that, that information out to us yet. But I'm really, really happy with that. Um, every year I try and like beat my my school from the previous year because my only competition is myself. I know we get ranked against each other, and on, unfortunately, I do see it in university. I do see people seeing each other as competition, and I think it's really sad in my opinion because the only person in life who should be a competition is you. Um, you should only look back at yourself and see what you did and what you can do better next time. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty much my goals is to always do better than what I did last time. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with my results. Um, so now talking about how I revised for these exams. So like I said, it's two parts. So 50% of my grade came from the multiple choice papers. Um, there was two papers, each one had 100 marks. And um, the second part of my results came from my uh, practical, which was 14 stations. Five of them were 15 minute stations and nine of them were 10 minute stations. So I'm mostly gonna focus on how I revised for the written stuff. Um, if you guys want me to do a, a revision on OSCEs, uh, so the practical stuff, then let me know. But I don't know how helpful that would be because I know that the way I revised for the written stuff would be really good for GCSEs and A-levels even. So what I did 
was um, I've got my notebooks here. So I have two notebooks and these are both literally filled with my notes. So my exams were in July and I started revising properly like hardcore in April. So I do some work throughout the year, like um, a couple of hours a day for about four, four days a week. But because I go to university on placement full time, so I go from 8 a.m. till like minimum 3.30, usually 5 p.m. Uh, so that's quite a long day. So to come back and revise full time afterwards is too much for me to do for the whole year. I feel like I'd burn out. So I started revising full time from April. So from April, I would, literally go straight to the library after placement and I would stay till about 11 p.m uh, 10 11 p.m or I would come home and do that revision but usually I like to go to the library reason being is because uh, first of all the journey home can distract you and then when you get home you forget you need to revise that's one of the reasons I do it the second is that there's no noise in the library but at home even when I want to film a video there's always someone who wants to make noise and the slightest noise will distract you and thirdly being around other people who are studying and not on their phones and stuff will stop you from going on your phone and being distracted so I think it's a really good environment to rise in if you have a library and you've never tried it out I recommend trying it out because you know sitting in silence and just getting your work done you're so much more productive another thing that I do is I take breaks but the first sitting so when I first go to the library and sit down I try and sit for as long as I can without like without taking a break because that is when you're most productive. So the first sitting is when you're most productive. After that, you're gonna need regular breaks. So usually I can do my first sitting for, I've done for up to like two and a half hours, three hours, and then I'll need a break. Um, I'll go get a coffee or like a snack or something like that. And then I'll come back and recuperate or I'll sit outside the library with my friends, have a little chat. And then after that, I do like an hour and a half and then like a half an hour break or 20 minute break and like that cyclical um just because you always want to be like focused you don't want to lose your focus and if you sit down too long you'll end up looking at your notes but you won't actually be focused on your notes if that makes sense so let me show you guys my notes so so i am a spider diagram queen uh i love making spider diagrams and when I go back through my notes I like literally just highlight everything that's important and uh, I use colours, I think colours really help a lot and I write all the key information so what I do is I use textbooks to get the information that I need and the textbooks that I use a lot of you guys ask me so I use the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Specialties I'll put a little picture here and I also use the Oxford uh, Handbook of Clinical Medicine again I'll put a picture right here and I use that to make my notes and when I'm making my notes I, I don't rush to make notes I like to read through make sure I completely understand it and then I'll move on to the next topic so um, each topic, so for example, each specialty can take me about two or three weeks to two weeks, I would say, to make notes on. So to make notes on all of gynecology took me about a week and a half because I, I really love that placement. So it was easier for me to absorb it. But psychiatry took me like three weeks because I, it's a concept that took me longer to kind of grasp. But then once I got it, I was happier with it. So those are the textbooks that I use, that's how I make my notes. I make spider diagrams and then closer to um, exam time I can look back at my diagram and kind of highlight everything that's important or even the day before it's really good for going back and seeing what's important. Now how I consolidate my memory is once I've made these notes we have a website um, that's available all over the world, you guys can check it out, um, called pastmedicine.com and pastmedicine.com is basically a question bank with like 5,000 questions I'm not sponsored or any way affiliated, I wish I was because like it's freaking awesome um, and yeah so I heard about it through people at uni and I got it and you pay, I, I can't even tell you how much you pay but it's nothing more than like £25 for like six months or a year or something like that so it's not it's fairly inexpensive for how many questions you get 5,000 questions so um, they have questions on each specialty so they have all of medicine so gastro uh, hematology infectious diseases all of that and cardiology resp and then they'll have each specialty as well so like gynecology obstetrics uh, uh, women's health uh, ophthalmology neurology so they'll have all of these questions and for each a specialty they'll have about 300 questions so once I'd made all of my notes I would do all 300 questions and it gives you like feedback on like if you get a question wrong right underneath it like almost like a 
textbook bulletproof version it'll tell you like all the facts about that to uh, topic that you got wrong and uh, you can make notes from it and that's what I would do and then I also had um, along with my textbooks I had the question book for my textbooks so the Oxford assess and progress books and I bought those and I did all of the questions for the clinical specialties and I did some of the questions for clinical medicine but not all of them simply because of time. Uh, I didn't manage to do all of those questions. But I would. that was really good for me when I take the train. Um, there's no reception, so I can't use like an online website. So I would use the tech, that book of questions to consolidate my memory. And yeah, from that I did about 700 questions. From past med, I would say I did about a few thousand questions, like two, three thousand questions. Probably, yeah, this year. I think every year I do about two, three thousand. There are some people who just study from past medicine so they there's about 5,000 questions on there and they'll do it like three times but I feel like that wouldn't work for me I like to read from the textbook and understand the subject rather than be a question spotter who just kind of picks up from the mark scheme because in real life as a doctor um, you know you're not going to be able to question spot things in my opinion but what whatever works for each person at the end of the day we're, we're all working towards the same thing so I just thought I'd let you know what some people do so yeah, that's pretty much how I studied for my exams. And uh, yeah, so I made notes. I uh, read over my notes before the exam, but in the meantime, in that time frame, I did questions. And that is how I consolidated my memory. And overall, I got past mark, like I said, average across uh, the written and the, the practical. I got 65% past mark, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, I might, you guys might think that's quite low, but like I said, the pass mark is usually around 50%. So technically I got 15% by the pass mark, uh, which usually puts me about on the fifth decile, I think. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. Like I said, I've been very, very open and honest with you guys. I like being open and honest with you on my channel. And uh, yeah, you know, please be kind. <laughs> Don't be mean in the comments about it. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very happy with what I did. Uh, also, if you go to university in the UK and you study a different subject, like you study, I don't know, like history or law or something, then you guys would be graded like first class 2-1, 2-2, all of that. So when I say 65%, a lot of you will be thinking that's like a 2-1 level. But yeah, medicine is graded in a different way. So I hope that you guys found all this really useful. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me down below. Uh, on my channel, I don't just talk about medicine. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know I do vlogs. I'm actually going away next week, so there's going to be a travel vlog of Mykonos, which I can't wait to share with you guys. Um, and I basically record my whole life, so med school, exercise, fitness, everything that you can imagine. So if you have any videos you want to see as well, even if it's not medical related or if it is, let me know down in the comments and I will love to film it for you guys. Uh, don't forget to check out my socials. They're always linked down below in the description box, but I'll write across the screen too. It is Persian Bunny on Instagram and Sepi Samoy on Snapchat. I love you all so, so, so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.